Hey, good morning guys. Good morning guys and welcome to Cytron's webinar series. My name is Adrian and thank you for tuning in to today's Learn to Code Trading Models using Tinkercad Code Blocks. So welcome guys and thank you for joining. So how does our session work is that we, it's a very casual session. Casual session. Um, I'll be presenting and demonstrating some of the tools in Tinkercad Code Blocks today. And if you have any questions, do drop your questions in the comment section. If you're watching us from YouTube, you can drop your comments on the right side bar. And if you're watching from Facebook, just drop your comment at the bottom. And I will try my best to answer your questions. I'll be able to read your questions during the presentation. All right. So um, a little bit introduction about what is Tinkercad and why it's called Blocks um, and why is the topic, the title of this webinar a bit odd, right? How can you actually code 3D models? So um, let me just go straight right into um, Tinkercad. So Tinkercad, it's a, right, it's a free, easy to use web application. It's meant for students to learn how to code, how to do 3D models and also um, after you learn 3D modeling, you, you get to do use your 3D models for 3D printing. So it's a, to me, I would say it's a all-in-one package web application for students to learn many, many things. That's why I highly recommend uh, give Tinkercad a try and explore the features in Tinkercad. And you can just go Google and search for Tinkercad. And then the first result will be Tinkercad, create the 3D digital designs with online CAD um, web application. But Tinkercad is not built just for 3D digital designs. It's meant for you to learn programming as well. Okay, so this is Autodesk Tinkercad. Uh, if you join if you enter the web application you will get to join the class or start tinkering so first things first i'll have to sign into my account okay i'm just going to go ahead and sign in right uh, so you will need internet connection to try tinkercad and 
uh, every student will need to have their own account. I believe all students have their own Gmail and you just need to log into your Gmail and then give it a try. If you have your laptop with you right now, I recommend you to join me in today's session. Right? You, you can learn by true hands on. But if you don't, then it's okay. You can watch this recording later on and follow through the steps. So in Tinkercad, you can learn how to do 3D designs like um, 3D modeling to create your objects for 3D printing. Today, I'm not going to cover 3D designs. I'm going to cover code blocks, which is a new feature in Tinkercad. And then um, previous in previous webinar series, I actually covered circuits on programming with Arduino using Tinkercad. So everything done here is a simulation. You don't really need the hardware to learn Arduino. Right? It's a stage where you actually experience Arduino before you get a physical Arduino. So Tinkercad allows you to run simulation and experience those um, you know, hardware. And then code block is also a simulation of creating 3D designs but with the help of um, coding. So if you learn about Scratch or M block, you will probably know what is visual programming. Uh, it's like puzzle programming type block based programming where you just drag and drop uh, puzzles together, right? You snap the puzzles together to create a series of a sequence of code to create a 3D model. So over here, there are these three different web application, uh, three different things you can learn in Tinkercad. And I can tell you CodeBlock is very new, but it's the, the way I see it, it's the future of learning coding because it's so interactive. Before this coding is not, um, you know, you, do, you, you see results in text, but you can't really imagine it like uh, in 3D models. Okay, so you, I, I can't really explain it in words, but let's go ahead and try, give it a try, and then you will be able to see what code blocks is all about. So first thing, you, you just need to log in this Tinkercad, create an account, and then go to code blocks and create new code block. Just create a new code block. Um, bear in mind that in Tinkercad code blocks, you are allowed to sign in as a teacher or you're allowed to sign in as a student. All right, teacher will allow you, you will get more tools like share. You get to share your uh, class lessons and uh, lesson plans with your students. So when you create new, it will ask you, okay, do you want to continue on your previous creations or do you want to go through existing activities? Hi, good morning. Thanks for joining. Okay. All right. So you, you get to um try out their activities or you even get to check out other people's design and uh, later on i will show some of these designs uh why is it so interactive why is it so interesting and it's not just 3d designs in this case it's more than that so over here there are three different activities the first activity is to introduce you to shapes if you are a five-year-old student I can tell you this app, if your, if your children or your students, they know how to use uh, keyboard, mouse, and they understand how to drag and drop, then this is actually suitable for five years old and above. Okay, there's no hardware. You, you just need to learn how to interact with the software. And it's a good platform for you to learn shapes too, and X and Y and Z exist to, to understand the world of 3D, basically. And then later on, the second lessons, you will learn how to move shapes. Okay, which direction are you moving? X exists, Y exists, or Z exists. And then later on, uh, you will learn how to rotate the shapes. Bear in mind that all of this, again, it's not just 3D modeling, it's coding. You will learn how to code these shapes to perform certain actions. Over here, in today's lesson, I will cover Lesson one and lesson three, and then lesson two, I will let you try it yourself. Okay, you will learn how to move shapes. And then later on at the end of this session, I will build a simple design. 
and then after that i will show you some of the designs available here so let's get into it the first activity that we're going to try is learn about shapes so in code blocks uh, like any other Tinkercad lesson plans, it's very interactive. You can see on the bottom left here, it basically shows you what you need to do. On the left side, you have your, uh, your blocks. And then over here, this is the dashboard or the, the empty space, the blank space for you to drag your blocks and leave it here. Similar like Scratch or and block or all those block based programming you just drag and drop and then leave it here so you just have to follow the instructions so first things drag a box block into workspace and press the play to view the results simple right so i already done that i drag this block over here and then i just need to click the play button here i hope you can see clearly um, let me see yeah i try to increase my size so you can see it better so I just need to hit the play button here and then I'll be able to see a block. Okay. Um, yeah. So I have a block here. It's a block. Okay. So again, you can drag this and Post it here to remove it, or you can hit delete button. So again, once you drag this here, click play, and then you will get this object here. Just now, because I click on something else, then it doesn't recognize as a, an object. So right now I added a box and my box color is red. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue on, click continue. Lesson two. Open the color menu and change the box color to green. Press play to view the results. So drag the box, press the color, and select green color, and then press play. Now I got a green box. Simple, right? Continue. Click this symbol and open the box block. So what is the box block? When I click this, it will expand the box block. You can see, you can actually change the size of the box. The size of the box consists of the width, length, and height. So now you are, need, you are required to set the width to 60 and press play. You have to, lead, you have to read the instructions uh, in this case. So width, width is W. So W, I just need to set to 60. And then everything leave it as the same and hit play. So can you see right now? Once I adjust the width, I got a rectangle. It's no longer a square, a cube. Okay. So this is how you adjust your shape and sizes. And with this feature, you can draw a lot, a lot of shapes. Uh. Continue. So here comes a few, uh, or later on, they will come, they will give you a few challenges to test your understanding on the features in the code blocks um, after this. Lah. Okay, so now the box is 20, 20, 20, 20 width, 20 length, 20 height. Make a box that is two times its current length and three times its current height. So this involves a little math. You will need to do some simple math. So which is the length? Let's open up the code block, which is the length. So the second one is the length. So it has to be double the length, which is 40, and triple the height, 20 times 3, 60. And then just hit, hit play. So there you have it. When you get the tick, it means you done it right. You got it correct. OK, now you have this shape. Click Continue and move on to the next part of the lesson so now this is a little exercise that you get to practice during the lesson to make sure that you understand the the, the features and the blocks in shapes so now it needs you to fill the box here the empty space here with a box 
right? You have to create a shape that fills this size. They don't give you any answers. They don't tell you what's the size of this shape. You will have to try and error to get the right shape. So first things first, I will drag a box. This box, if I click play, it's going to look like that. But right now, my goal is to fill in this space. So I have to open it up, open the block, uh, the box block, and adjust the width, length, or height. So in this case, I'm not going to adjust the height. The height is OK. I just need to fill the space here. And the width seems OK. So all I need to do is adjust the length. And let's say I'm going to go 100 and click play. 100 looks a bit long, too long, so I'm just going to reduce it. Again, this requires some trial and error until you get it right. So I tried 70 and I got it right. It fits the shape, it fits the size within this uh, border here. OK, great. Thanks, Shaman. I, I thank you. I, I, you are trying as well, right? So uh, again, if you have your PC with you, I encourage you to try it, test it, and then experience it. And if you're an educator, try it as well so that you understand how you can uh, deliver this to your students. It's a very fun platform, uh, I could say. So continue to the next exercise. So just now you learned about adjusting the length. Now it's going to ask you, match the height of the hole. So you have already learned length. Now learn about height of a shape. So again, when I click a box into this platform here, I'm not going to adjust anything. I will just play and see the box. So this is the box. The width seems fine. The shape, the, the size of the width seems OK. And the length is OK. I just need to fill the empty space here. So I have to adjust the height. So let's say I try 60 and hit play. 60 is a bit short. Maybe I try 80. Yeah, 80 is the right size. So now I got it right. I just need to fill in this slot. Again, it looks very simple, but it's a very good practice for your students, your young, your young students to get used to this um, application. Click continue. Okay, now this is a bit difficult. It needs you to adjust the width, length, and height to fit into the hole here. This is the challenge, a challenge level. So let's start by adding a box and hit play. Okay, you can see the box is very small. So what do I do next? I adjust it, the parameter one at a time. I'm not going to adjust everything and make me confused. So let's try with the weave first. I have to increase the weave. Okay, again, there's no measurement tools here. You can't really see a calculation plan. You can't see the, uh, the plot and everything. It is all based on try and error. And if you are try if you add the measurement there, it will complicate things for the students as well. So let the students try it. I'm gonna go 50 for width and hit play. Still a bit short. Let's go 70 and hit play. Okay, now I got my width correct. I'm gonna go length right now from front to end. I'm gonna put 40. And yeah, seems okay, 40. And now I'm gonna go with the height. Right, maybe 70. 70 is a bit short. Maybe I can try 90. Still a bit short. 110. Almost there. 120. Congratulations. Okay, so this activity lets you introduce shapes and x y and z exist to your students but the x y and z exists you, you can come later in the next activity it, this one over here is more about shapes the length of the shape the height of the shape and the width of the shape right when you talk about an object you need to talk about the 
length, width, and height. And this is one of the basics that we learned in school as well. But right now, you get to actually visualize these things. And you're not drawing it from the sheets, but you're drawing it from, by using blocks. So click the arrow key. And now you can move on to the next activity. I am going to go straight to the third activity, rotating shapes. So moving shapes basically means you move x axis, y axis, and z axis. But in rotating blocks, you can also learn x, y, and z. Uh, I skip one of the part because I want you to try it later on. But over here, we will learn how to you know, spin the shapes. And it's a bit challenging, but you need to be able to understand x, y, and z while you do this. So first things first, I'm going to drag the shape, leave it there, and hit play. Now I got a box. Let's read the instruction. Add a box block and attach the rotate block to it. The rotate block is over here. Rotate block. So rotate block is under modify. Drag the rotate block and snap it down below, like scratch. Now, notice that the axis of rotation is set to x axis over here. x axis and 90 degrees. Okay. By default, it's x axis 90 degrees. So if you hit play, your box is going to turn on the x axis and turn 90 degrees. Okay. It's going to turn 90 degrees. It's going to rotate 90 degrees. Okay. Let's see that again. 90 degree. If I play, 90 degree. Now, moving on. It gets harder and harder in this activity. Okay. Next, now I want to rotate a love, a heart shaped object um, on the Z axis, against the Z axis. So, first add the heart shape and then drag a rotate. By default, again, it's X axis. So, I need to adjust it to Z axis and hit play. Done. Simple, right? So the activity, um, it actually builds up the momentum uh, slowly, let you understand the features of on these blocks. So next, use the heart and rotate blocks to point the heart at the target. You can see the image here. I need to point the heart facing this yellow target here. Set the rotate block to the axis x. Uh, the exact axis. This may require several tries. Press play to see the results. So I have my heart here and I am going to just go ahead and play. So you can see my heart is pointing this direction. Now I need to point it to this orange triangle target. So I just gonna add Z axis rotate 90 degrees. I don't change the degree and hit play. As you can see, it moves from here to here. Let's try again and see that. 0 to 90 degrees. So it's not pointing at my target yet. But it looks like it's half of 90 degrees. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust 45. Or I can, you know, over here drag this tiny little clock uh, angle thing. And instead of typing, I can actually adjust the knob here for 45 degree and hit play. Correct. So now the heart shape is pointing at the triangle target here. And um, this is again to practice on adjusting the degree. So go back to the previous few lessons. First, you learn how to adjust the x axis. And then later on, you learn how to adjust the y uh, z axis. And now you learn how to adjust the degrees. Okay, now it looks a bit complicated, but um, it's the same activity as the previous one. It's just a different axis, so it looks a bit blur. But first, let's add a shape. I'm going to add a pyramid, and there is my pyramid there. Add the pyramid and rotate the pyramid, and point the pyramid at the end of the red target here, red color target. This will require several tries, 
So uh, let's try. So how am I going to rotate? I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis now. And I'm going to just leave 90 degree there and hit play. So when I hit 90 degree, it's turning the other direction. So it means I have to turn more than 180 degree, maybe around 270 degree. Okay, I'm going to turn all the way here and hit play. So it's pointing this direction right now, but I want it to point at the rate target. So I'm just going to adjust it a bit to the top and yep, correct. So a lot of these activities are trial and error to let the students understand the steps uh, that they need to get through. There are a few ways to learn shapes and coding. Number one is try and error, and number two is you follow an existing solution. Just follow and see the responses of each solution. And in this case, there's no solution. It's just challenges, and it allows you to try different, different values until you get it right. And this is also a very good way for students to see the results immediately, almost instantaneously. Next activity, use two rotate blocks as shown to point the pyramid at the rate target. The X axis turn the pyramid forward, the Z axis turn towards the rate target. Be sure to match all the numbers. Over here, the answer is already here. You can just follow it very clearly. But basically, it's trying to tell you you have to turn your shapes twice. X exists 90 degree, Z exists 90 degree. Can't imagine that, just play it and then see the results. Okay, let's play that again. By default, your pyramid will stand and then it turns 90 degree. You can play this code in sequence, step by step. So step one, I have my shape. Step two, I turn it 90 degree on the X axis. And then step three, I turned it 90 degree on the Z axis. So now it's pointing at the red color triangle. So you can play it step by step, okay? Continue. In this activity, you have to stack the heart, rotate and move the blocks in order Use rotate and move to place the heart in the red target. So now this is more like a game ready. You want to get this heart into the red color heart shape here. So this is my heart. And I want to move it in here. So how do I do it? First thing, I will need to rotate my heart to that angle where the heart is pointing. So let's just go ahead and rotate it. But rotate to what exists. Not X, not Y, but Z. Okay, 90 degree looks a bit off, a bit too much. So I'm going to go lesser, 45 degree. And then it looks like that, almost the correct angle. Next, I'm going to move it towards this hole. This is lesson two where I skipped just now, but now we still get to try the moving feature on for the shapes. So just drag your move and move. You will have X, Y, and Z. So you can see there's the label here, X axis is here, this red color line, and Y axis is this green color line. How should I move it downwards this direction? The X axis have to be positive and the Y have to be negative. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try 50 X positive and negative Y 50 and then hit play rotate and then it's going to move to the center here. Now, the X axis looks correct. You see, it looks like it's on the right X axis, but the Y looks like it's a bit inside. So I have to increase the Y axis so that it goes lower later. 
So over here, I just have to increase, let's say, negative 70 and hit play. And then there you go. Straight into the heart shape hole. Um, it's a bit challenging if the students try this for the first time. I mean, for anyone, because if you can't imagine, you can't see things in 3D, it, you will find it challenging. Like, what is X? What is Y? Some people find it difficult to see things in 3D. And once you practice this over and over again, you will be able to get the dimension correct, uh, be able to visualize the dimension easily. So it takes some practice until you get it uh, used to it. Now. Next example, I think this will be the last example for this activity. Make a matching lollipop. So build this lollipop. How can you build this lollipop? So this is a bit, um, this is the end of the final lessons in code blocks. The activities that they, the tutorials that they provide. And it boils down to creating your own 3D design. And in this case, create your own lollipop. So how should we do this? Uh, in the instruction, it asks you to stack two cylinder blocks and set the color and size as shown. Then add and rotate and move the block. Use them to match the lollipop shown. This may require several tries. So it didn't give you the answer. It just asked you to go ahead and try. Okay, I want you to try. And that's what we're going to do. So first thing, I am going to add a cylinder. And my cylinder, I want it to be red color like this lollipop over here. So just change the simple one, red color. And then now I want to rotate my red color cylinder to this direction here. So I'm going to go rotate. And supposedly, it should rotate on the x axis 90 degree. So let's just hit play in that. You got it. So the cylinder is going to rotate facing your way. But right now it looks a bit thick. It looks a bit, uh, the width, the length is a bit long. So I'm just going to adjust my length, my height, uh, my height of my cylinder. In the cylinder, there are only two parameters, the radius or the height, the height of the cylinder. I'm going to reduce the height to maybe three. Hit play. T3 looks a bit thin, maybe 4. Okay, 5. Okay, looks matching. All right, and then the radius seems the same. So now I want to move this cylinder all the way upwards. So drag, move, and move it upwards. What is upwards? Upwards is sec axis. So X, X is the orange line, Y is the inside, the green line, and blue line is the Z axis. So go ahead, give it a number, and watch it go up. Oh, 60 is too much. So I'm going to try 30. Yeah, thanks, Shaman. I think you are ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. So 30 looks right. See, same height, 30. Next, I will need to add my lollipop stick. So what do I need to do? I will need to add another cylinder. I can snap it outwards here. Or I can snap it below here. And I will need to change the color of my lollipop tube. I will change it to white. And then, of course, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and play and see what it go where where will the cylinder be? Okay, you can see right. So now the cylinder is over here. It's very fat. It's very the radius is very big, and then it's not long enough. I will need to adjust my radius to thinner to smaller so that it looks like a stick lollipop stick. So open up this and reduce the radius. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the minimum two. Still very thick, two radius is still very thick. So 
the radius of two have a diameter of four it means it's very big uh. okay radius of one looks fine now i need to adjust the yeah shaman thanks so the s i assume the s is the height Let's try that. 40. There you go. Looks about right. So normally, the blocks, they will place everything at the top. And then it moves down. One forty, and then okay. So let's look at the code here. First, you create the cylinder stick like that. Next, you create your lollipop like that, and later on you rotate your lollipop ninety degree, and then later on you move your lollipop upwards. So. There you go. Everything looks correct. 140, 10, 5. Okay, let's play it again. And then congratulations, you are done with this activity. Um, you may find it challenging if it's your first time 3D modeling, but once you get the gist of it, you understand X, Y, and Z and the sum of the simple tools then you can do this too. Okay, give this a try. It's very fun. So once you're done with the third activity, um, let me show you some of the examples around here, right? The very cool examples around here. These are the examples that you can take and straight away modify into yours, or you can um, build your own. Later, I'm gonna build my own simple one, this table over here. But let's look at this chibi character. All right, that looks interesting. So you just click on their design and then go ahead and click copy and tinker. The reason why Tinkercad is called Tinkercad is because everything there lets you tinker around. It lets you to try and error. Tinker basically means you try and error until you get it right. You play around with it, you mess around with it. And it's a, it's a good way to learn anything you mess things around so the chibi you can see the code is very very long because it requires a lot of shape um, it goes from head to hair to eyes to mouth to body and to the arms legs uh, and many many things so it's not as simple as it seems but once you understand the basics, you can actually draw uh, your own objects. So let's just go ahead and play the file, the code here. Click play and then see how the creator created this chibi character. So bear in mind that this is actually running on code right now, line by line. Every single action represents a shape creating a shape, molding the shape into the right size that you want, and then putting them back together, putting them together. Okay, done. Okay, actually not done yet. They're still modifying a bit of the stuff, and then yeah, done. So to create this character, you will need such a long code. And everything here runs in sequence just now, one by one, one by one, one by one, until it creates the object here. Okay, you can increase the speed of the playtime and then see how they created this thing. And you can actually export this file in GIF, in GIF. 
so that you can share with your friends like hey look at this look at how i created my object can you do that too can you i challenge you to create the same object with this sequence if you click export you can actually save this file in a few formats dot sdl for 3d printing the object you can import it into a different 3d modeling software um, grtf svg and different parts and you can share this in animated gif and you can share it with your friends uh, so you can see or oh, how how am i going to move and everything the gif basically shows you the whole movement of your code and it's a good way to share it with your friends so there you have it this is a very complicated design i'm not gonna do this i don't think i will be able to do this as well it takes a lot of imagination <laughs> i'm gonna do something simple and yeah let's get right into that so what you need to do create a new code block and then go ahead and start a new design a new design means it's empty you have nothing here I'm going to build an IKEA, the IKEA lag table, uh, a simple table. Uh, but before I continue on, guys, if you have questions, feel free to drop your questions in the comment section. Uh, I know this is a very introductory um, session. I just want to show you guys what's available on Tinkercad because you knowing it's good stuff for you to learn about 3D modeling. If you haven't learned about 3D modeling, it's this is a place where you can start. And I highly recommend it. It's very intuitive for students to learn. If you're using Raspberry Pi, it works too. You don't really need a high graphic computer or laptop to use this, okay? So first I will add a shape. I will add a table and then I'm just gonna go put it brown color and then hit play, I got a box here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's a, real, a, little, a little bit complicated when you get started. I think it gets complicated when you want to create a very difficult object. Um, but it's, I think it's, it's a good platform for students to start building something with a combination of their programming um, knowledge. Uh. They need to know a bit about scratch sequence programming and be able to think in sequence, in sequential manner. And then later on, you just let them practice their knowledge on programming in 3D modeling. Okay, I, I think the sequence will be, uh, the way you let them try is first you try scratch and then you try 3D modeling on Tinkercad. And then now you go and try code blocks. So it's a mixture of Scratch and uh, Tinkercad 3D model on code blocks. And then you'll be able to see they are actually uh, expanding their creativity, trying to explore different, different shapes, uh, creating different, different objects. It's a, I can say it's a very interactive way to learn, learn stuff, but uh, it's a good, good way to try, good way to learn. Uh, I suppose I want to build a table, but what, how am I going to build a table? So first thing I will need a big piece of wooden block. I make it brown so that it looks wooden. So a big piece of wooden block, I will create one big piece of wooden block. And then later on, I will slice my wooden block into a table. I'll just cut the parts that I don't want. Cut, cut, cut until I don't want. And I have one question from Shaman. Is it possible to make a robot that can move? Um, e you have to group your blocks, your shapes together, and then move the whole block together. Then yes, it's possible. But if you want to move the hand and everything, actually it, it's possible too. You, you just need to move the group. So let's say you created a group for this entire arm, and then you can move the entire arm, go up, go down, move left, move right, walk straight, walk back. But it's very challenging, but it actually sounds fun. Like you can actually do it. Uh, animation in a way. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna increase this to 100, 100, 100, 100, and then hit play. Okay, now I got my big block over here. Um, make sure you, when you 
click, you have to click on this color so that it's a big piece of block. And now I want to cut, 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 cut. I want to chop into smaller pieces uh, to create the table legs. But before I start cutting off parts that I don't want, we just now in the tutorial, they never taught us how to slice and remove parts that you don't want. Later, I'll show you how. I want to move this block upwards on the plane. So how do I do that? Just drag move. On the plane is what? Z exists. So go up. Z exists by 50. So it's going to move up all the way up 50 because my box is 100. Let's see what question. We can record the movement. Um, if you talk about the, you can actually save it as a GIF, right? Over here, you can share it as a GIF, animated GIF. You, um, this is 3D part, exporting into 3D part. But recording the movement is equivalent to recording the code, nah, the sequence of the code. So other than that, you can save it as a GIF, nah, and then you can use the GIF and put it somewhere else. The GIF, I've never tried. I'm not sure whether it will show this work plane here in the GIF, but it's worth a try. But I think the whole idea of them creating this animated GIF is to show their friends on how they can create a 3D object. If you are talking about standalone animated, um, you know, GB or objects, I don't think you can do that. So, but it's worth a try, lah. Okay. Um, actually, right after thinking about it, this is also very similar to um movie creators when they create CGI and when they create uh cartoons, they actually draw their three D models and then apply movement into these three D models, digital models, lah. So it's very similar to cartoons or animations when they create the movement of their digital characters and then they just, hey, I want you to move a certain angle on this. I want you to move on a certain angle of this. But I don't think they are doing it in the coding base. They are doing it in, um, you just drag the movement and then it, and then you the character move at that movement. Doesn't sound as simple as this, but I, I this is what I know. Right? They move 3D models uh, in the way they want for animation. So next, I want to cut two holes here to create my table legs. So I just drag a box, another box. Okay, this time the box doesn't matter what color it is. Okay, I just leave it as red. Ah, uh, no, uh, I'll leave it as red, as red, but I'll have to click this gray color circle over here. This represents um, slice removing the parts when it intercepts with your object, your solid object. So I'm going to increase the width to 100 just to let you see what I mean by slicing off the parts that I don't want. Click play. Yeah, you can see. So now I literally slice through this part. So this part, it will disappear. After that, it will disappear. Um, all I need to do is I need to add. Uh, I need to add. No, I need to create a group. Yeah, I need to create a group and then click play. Okay, once I create a group, you can see it slides through. So this is just one of the Tinkercad feature where you need to create a geometry boolean, they call it. And then later on, the interception, intercepted part will be removed. So let's continue on building this table. I am going to increase my length um, to 70. And then hit play. Okay, you can see shape ready. Now I'm going to go height, make it higher, make it taller. Um, 70. Okay, 70 
doesn't look enough so i'm gonna move this higher by 50 move the block higher by 50 any modifier or movements placed under the shape will only move that shape it doesn't affect anything else before if you remove the code like that it will still run in sequence it's not like scratch where you put forever or start or anything removing it will only still run it unless you delete it click play move up oh now i got this shape okay this is not what i want so i have to go down by 40. Oh, maybe by 30. And then this one, 90. Again, you see there's a lot of try and error. It's not like AutoCAD or um, actual 3D modeling software where you already know the position of what you want to draw. You decide what you want. This one is more on try and error. You just, you know, tinker here, tinker there until you get the shape that you want. So now I got this uh, chair, it doesn't look like a table yet. And I'm going to slice through here to make four legs. So similarly, I can just copy here, duplicate, and then um, I'm just going to place it here. Okay, you can't drag it here and throw it here. You have to throw it at a trash can here. I'm too used to scratch. I always just drag it to this empty space here and throw, but it doesn't throw away your blocks. Uh. Okay, and then uh, length, I will change to 100, and here I will change to 70. Keep play, go up, remove, remove. There you have it. I have my table already. Very simple, right? So this is a very simple code uh, just to create this table. You just chop off the slice of the part that you doesn't want, you don't want. And then later on, after your students understand, understand shapes and movement, you can introduce them variables. So let's take a look at variables. Of course, there are so many other shapes that I didn't try it out. Uh, it's all for you guys to try. And of course, there are also control repeat, like um, repeat, like for loop, how many loops you want to try, count with. It's also like for loop as well. I am going to add variables. Okay, this is the last thing. Um, we, we are almost running out of time, but I'm going to cover variables to just to show you what you can do with variables. So first thing, drag create variables. The variable name by default is called item. So I just create height. And then I have to drag a new one and create a new variable. Length. Drag another one and create a new one. With. If I duplicate this, oh, sorry. If I duplicate the variables, it's actually sharing the same variable. Changing this name will only change the original one. Uh, basically, this is a global variable. So you, when you duplicate it, you are creating a global variable. You are not creating a, a, an individual variable. So you have to drag from the block here to create a new variable. So width, length, and height. I am going to change my width, length, and height to 100. 100, 100, 100. And then over here, I just need to drag this data, height, place it here, length, place it here, width, place it here. Copy my width, place it here. Copy my length, place it here. Okay. So there you have it. I am using variables, but not for everything. Uh. Where some certain parts you still need to try and error. And you still need to add, put your own values in. Okay. So here, yeah, I, I still have seven minutes, so I'm just going to cover more stuff. In these objects, you see that there's this edge over here. Edge means that it's uh, you can create a corner, a fillet on the edge. So let's say I just add 10. 10 and 10. Okay, this one no need. 
uh, this one is just to remove, this one is the object itself. So you can see now my table is very smooth <laughs> because I add the smoothing part really at the side 10 by 10 radius. So I have a very smooth table right now. But what happens if I add it here? I'll get a very smooth from the inside and outside. Okay. The object that it sliced off is smooth. That's why the inside looks like that. Um, but it's fun uh, when you can try and see what kind of results you get from all these experiments. All right. So guys, uh, I hope you learned something here. Uh, there are a lot of other examples that you can try out. I basically show you everything about code blocks already. And I hope that you give it a try. Let your students try. If they are already using Tinkercad, good. Try out code blocks as well. It's still very new. It was better last year, but today uh, it's the actual feature already. They are supporting this feature already. And we should take advantage on this because it's free. So if you have more questions, I still have five minutes here and you can drop your questions in the comment section. I will try my best to understand, uh, to answer your question. But if you don't have questions, then let me share a few slides, a few things uh, to end our session. If you are interested in learning about 3D printing or 3D modeling, you are welcome to join our Telegram group on our 3D printing community group. But for students who are passionate in learning coding or even the fundamentals are scratch and block, things like that, or even make code on microbit, you're welcome to join our junior maker group. In You can actually check our YouTube description down below. The link is over there for the Telegram group. You can go there and you can join our group there as well. And I know you are waiting for this. So if you are, uh, if you have any feedback that you would like to share, you would like to let us know what you think about this session, drop us a feedback, just scan this QR code or go to the link here. I will drop the link in the comment section right now. And then uh, let us know what you think about today's session and what session do you want to hear or uh, if you have, if you are interested in sharing your own topic, I welcome you to join me as well in our future session. We actually open up this platform for makers, teachers, educators to, you know, join us and share your experience in coding, in programming, or uh, anything related to STEM. We want our community to get involved in sharing. Right, don't take it as a class. Lah. It's not something formal. It's something that should be casual. And I'm doing this very casually for every weekend on Saturday. I, I just shared you the link, Farah. Uh, you can check in the comment section over there. Yep, just fill in the form. Let us know what you think. And then you'll be able to receive an e-certificate on your email. Make sure you type the right, correct email address and the correct full name so that your certificate is printed with the name in there. Okay, um, yeah, again, if you are interested in joining our future webinar series, and I mean as a presenter, let me know, drop me an email or drop me a feedback and I'll be able to contact you later on. Okay, great question, um, Slim. So the code blocks, it can't export to Scratch 3.0 because it's, it's not similar to Scratch. It's a 3D modeling. It's basically a 3D modeling uh, feature, uh, but it make use of code of block-based programming style to program the 3D models. So you can't really use it in Scratch. Uh, when I said Scratch, similar to Scratch is the structure of how they program the blocks. You drag and drop your blocks, put it together to create objects almost similar like Scratch, but Scratch is all 2D. So when students learn about Scratch, they can actually move into code blocks easily. But what I recommend is Scratch and then Tinkercad 3D modeling before you go to code blocks. Code blocks is the third stage 
for students to learn about it. <clears throat> to do these shapes with SVG, um, you can try, but most of the shapes available in the <clears throat> in the software here are 3D. So I am not sure if you can create a 2D in this software here because minimum the shapes will still be 3D in 3D form. Let's see. Let's try. All right, I create a box and then I create a 2D. I think you still need to modify the SVG file a little bit so that it fits into a 2D. It means you, you scrape the 2D out and then you put it into your scratch. Uh, but if you put in 3D, you, you have to try it now. If you want to display a 3D in the scratch, then possible. But movement wise, no, there's no movement, there's no animation. Okay, 20, 20, and then zero height. Yeah, so say lah, I create a 2D over here with zero height. I can draw an image here and then I can put it there. Take it as a plane for um, just drawing image and put it into scratch. Maybe possible and it's worth a try. Haha, <laughs> Shaman. Yeah, I might be at inventing. I will think about it. All right, it's a it's an interesting topic, and the traction is gaining like, on the MIT Inventor part. Let me try and learn, and then see if we can share it with, or maybe you can join us, and you can share it. You can share experience on app inventing, MIT App Inventor. Okay. So if there's more, no more um, feedback or questions, I think I'm going to end the session here at 12 o'clock sharp today. I hope you learned something and I hope you find the presentation valuable. You um, And yep, thank you for joining again and I hope you have a great weekend. So see you next week and yeah, bye.